I don't know if you can pick it up very easily, but because I didn't, I made made this recess just a little bit uh, wider in diameter than the insert. I've got just a little bit of a gap on one side that I've got to figure out how to disguise that. And I think, I think what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to make a tiny little groove there and use some um, brass uh, brass uh, powder and we'll see how that works. I have not done that much so I don't know what kind of success we'll have but we'll give it a shot. Maybe I'll go a bit deeper. So now I've got a, a, a uniform groove around it. You can see that, that groove. Now we're going to see what kind of luck we have by putting in powder and then uh, dripping some thin CA around it. I said this is inlace. This is not inlace. This is just brass powder designed for this purpose. And this stuff is just so fine. I'm going to get just this little craft stick and get small amounts and by the way I did put a little uh, lacquer uh, sanding sealer on this to kind of help help this I'm just gonna scoot around the edge here okay now I've got it packed in I say packed I probably should probably thump this a little bit. Get any excess off. Now I'm just going to try to squeeze just a few drops of this. This is the challenge on this. So it'll kind of hopefully Drip down in there. And we'll be able to clean that up after it dries. I hope. Okay. I'm just going to let that dry. I'm not going to use the accelerator and then we'll come back and uh, finish that up in a moment. Okay, we've mounted the chuck back on the uh, spindle. I've let it dry for a good long while and then hit it with some uh, accelerant <coughs> just in case. I've taken a little round scraper, uh, put a, a fresh edge on it, and then I took the burr off because this this exotic is hard, the CA is hard, and the burr may be a little aggressive. So we're just going to lightly dress this end right here and see what happens. Lightly, lightly dress it. Let's just examine it. Oh yeah, and it's got a very nice, matter of fact, I think that's just about got it. I think all we've got left is a little bit of uh, sanding. We've got a little bit of powder that got in here. Let me see. I'm going to get a touch of mineral spirits and see if I can't wipe out any of that powder that might be in there. Still got a little bit here. I think I'm just going to go back and touch it just a bit with that scraper before we sand.
going to start off with some fresh uh, fruit. Actually, I think I'm going to use some, uh, just touch it a little bit with some 320 and then come back with a little 400. Just hand sand that a little bit around the edges. Sanding sealer on there. Yeah, I don't think that's looking looking good. Yeah, that brass I think filled it in and looked looks looks like uh, looks very nice. So we've dealt with the top pretty much. Now we're going to put on the bottom and thread the bottom. Let's go ahead and take this up. Let me see if I can't give you a nice look at that. See that that nice brass brass insert ring there. Very nice. Okay. Okay. Now, first thing we're going to do is finish hollowing this out. Um, Alright, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, do this a little bit with the 3 8 inch spindle gouge and finish, finish hollowing it. First, see if we can't get a little bit of a hole started in the center. Finder here, and we've got another oh three eighths of an inch or so. I'm going to actually step up to a half inch spindle gouge. A little more mass. We've got to measure the female. And then right here, and I like to do this in millimeter. So we're going to go down just a little ways. All right, we're going to sneak up on it. We're going to use a parting tool and make that tenon initially. take a couple of tries at threading kind of get get back into the practice so we're gonna make it a little thick nice smooth surface. Okay, now I'm going to put a little relief. Uh, I 
excellent. I'm going to sand this off camera and then we're going to come back and then we're going to get ready to thread. Okay, <clears throat> I've taken this tenon down a little bit so it's just a, a skosh uh, larger than the inside of the, the box. The next thing I've got to do is I've got to put a tiny little recess right here. I'm going to go for maybe a sixteenth of an inch wide, the thickness of the parting tool. I can't go very deep because this the wall thickness is not too deep so I've got to just ease it in there just enough where I've got some clearance pull that tool out now I'm going to take this pyramid point tool and just use as a scraper just kind of round off the edge here where I'm going to start my thread Okay, now we're going to take the male thread scraper where we go straight on. We give ourselves maybe a finger distance between the tool rest. And the first thing we've got to do, we've got to make sure that this is tool rest in pretty good shape. So let me just polish it up a little bit. A little 220. Just dress it. I don't want any little bumps to transfer to the threading. Now I'm going to take just a bit of paraffin and rub on there just to give it another little reduce friction just a little bit. And now we're going to do a bit of a dry run. We're going to cut right on center. And this is negative rake. It's been taken down a little bit, so I'm going to keep this tool rest flat right on center. Maybe raise it up just a hair. I'm going to get the speed down a little bit. Like I said, I generally thread 16 teeth per inch, just a little over 300. And then I'm going to come in from an angle, got my finger kind of pointed here, and just, just make some dry runs, get kind of a circular motion going here, and then just try to guess, guesstimate the speed and come across it. Let it find itself. Let it find a groove. Light pressure. Slowly start bringing it around, increasing the depth, and adding another another thread. See what happens if I get to right here and it bumps the wall while I'm still engaged, it's going to rip out that thread. So that's why you need just a bit of a relief there. Just a bit of paste, paste wax tends to relax some woods that, that don't have quite enough oil. So we'll just put a little paste wax in there. I like my threads to be somewhat loose but not sloppy. Just a bit more. Just a bit more wax. One more pass. Okay. That 
just take a little bit of patience. Get the speed up a little bit. Easy does it. Okay, now I want to make a uh, screw chuck so we can finish finish this bottom. So we're going to do that by just putting out a piece of two by four side uh, perpendicular grain. That is grain running this way like a bowl orientation. Just flatten that off. Again, we just want to scribe on this side. That looks pretty close. So let's see, let's measure that. It's a little bit bigger. And this goes remarkably fast. You would think this would take a, a, a while, but let me show you how easy it is to cut these threads in pine. First, let's just hollow this out a little bit. Now we need to use a uh, square scraper to square those through those walls up a little bit. Oops, slow it down a little bit. And this is a good practice on threading, so it's not wasted effort. I could make a jam chuck, but I find it's more satisfying and actually holds better. And because pine cuts so easily, it would make a terrible box. But with side grain, the threads hold better than in grain. my soft touch for just a little bit of support with this little piece of whatever you call it this plastic and I'll be able to get in here and shape the final body the way I want so we're going to use the spindle gouge and just
before I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and sand the outside, and then I'm going to finish the bottom. Okay, now I've got it sanded. I'll take off the tailstock support. I've got it sanded. We're taking off tailstock support, and we're just going to kind of dress up the bottom just a little bit. I think I'll do that with a with a bit of a scraper. This is end grain. Scrapers tend to work very well on end grain. Light touch. Just want to make sure the, the bottom is a little bit uh, concave so it won't rock when it sits down flat. So just ease this up. put just a little bit of texture in the bottom on most of these so let's just get a texturing tool and I'm just going to use the Wagner tool come in there put a drop of, drop of oil on it and lower the speed just a bit come in almost dead center Just a nice tiny little swirl pattern at the very bottom. And of course, if you watched my videos on texturing where I did a recent series, if you didn't miss that, go back and pick it up. We just kind of border this a little bit, flat side up. And we'll put another bead right here. Toothpicks. Let's put a couple toothpicks in there. See if it works. Be bad if I mis miscalculate it. for wear. So there we are, toothpick box.